So we worked with, or I worked with St. Vincent College, the Isle of Wight College and Plumpton College, part of our network. Um, so we had four teachers involved in total. So when we first met, everybody came with lots of ideas. So we decided in the first cycle to have a look at four different things and then see which one we can take forward um, and investigate further in cycle two. So College A uh, looked, decided to look at coaching. They had just uh, received some funding for coaching. So they involved 48 students and one teacher, both GCC and functional skills. And I will go into a little bit more detail in a moment. Uh, College B wanted to look at representations and manipulatives, uh, in particular on compound measures because they wanted to see if it makes any difference in terms of uh, student engagement and attainment. College C decided to look at a new skills check, uh, which basically is an initial assessment, but they wanted to rebrand it and kind of make it in a much more nurturing approach for their students, less threatening at the beginning of the year and a little bit more relaxed. And College D wanted to look at the Plickers app. So um, that particular college in cycle one wanted to use the app primarily for summative assessments, but wanted to also take it a little bit further later on. So um, the College A that looked at coaching uh, basically wanted to use the coaches that they now had access to uh, in, uh, to, to bridge gaps, skills gaps of the students, and decided that each student would get 30 minute coaching session in between assessments on identified topics. Um, and then they were asked, the students were asked after each session to fill in a little Google form on how they're feeling, are you feeling better, the same or worse, following the intervention. So for this particular cohort, 77% of the students reported that they felt better um, about the topic after a session, 23 reported that they felt about the same, 23%, and only one out of 48 students reported that they felt worse. So. Here's some data. Uh, I've got quite a few slides. So in terms of the data, we'll click through quite quickly because um, you can access them later on on the Padlet as well. So this is after the first intervention, round one, early on in the year. Then there's already an increase uh, in terms of how many students felt better. And then we have a last intervention, which has now jumped up to 70, 71%, I think, are now reporting that they're feeling better about a topic, um, which we thought was a really, really positive feedback from the students. So College B, um, wanted to have a look at representations or manipulatives. and. They weren't quite sure how to go about it, but they knew that one of the topics that their students really struggled with was um, compound measures, especially uh, speed distance time. So they wanted to have a look at this. They basically chose two different styles uh, after doing a little bit of research. So the simple multiplication division method and the magic triangle method. Uh, all classes, or both classes, sorry, um, were predominantly grade three students. And <clears throat> after a period of three weeks, all classes were presented with the same selection of past exam questions. Uh, the results initially were pretty similar to both classes. Um, and there is a lot more going into how this was delivered. I'm quite happy to answer questions, but I am aware of that. We did quite a lot throughout the year, so I can't go into too much detail. Um, but um, ultimately, at the end, the teacher found that there wasn't much difference between those students having something physical to play with 
um, or just learning a method of by heart, um, which was really interesting for me because I'm a big fan of the manipulatives. Um, but it was something that we wanted to have a look at a little bit further later on. Again, here's a little bit more data. Um, <clears throat> so on the top left, it's the initial uh, figures and then bottom right is after the intervention. Right. And again, I can answer some question on those. So that's fine. So then we've got College C, who basically felt that the initial assessment or diagnostic process wasn't working for the students. And yes, it was something that we needed to do in terms of tracking. You know, it was a requirement, but we wanted to look at it. A, a, they wanted to look at it a little different way. So what the team did was they put out a student survey where they basically wanted to gauge how students felt about their examinations in the first place um, because they haven't sat any in the past and we wanted to see whereabouts they're at and only 13 percent uh, stated that they felt confidence so the team then decided we need to look at an initial assessment that's inclusive and it's, it's a little bit more nurturing. They then asked the students in terms of their center assessed grades process from wherever they came, whether they were returning or new students to the college. And 69% of the students stated that book work would be their preferred way of um, being assessed for center assessed grades. And with that in mind, the assessment would then be based partly on book work. And at the end, <clears throat> the students gave some feedback on how they felt about the initial assessment, and it was a 3.58 out of five stars. So again, a little bit of pretty data. So here on the right was the initial questionnaire where the college wanted to know where the students stand in terms of confidence of sitting in exam. Um, here was the feedback from the students about what method would be their preferred um, with a second coming assessment in class. And that was the rating for how they felt about the initial assessment or as they're called a skills check. Okay, so College D looked at a Plikaza. So this particular teacher had worked with Plikas uh, in his previous role. And I don't know who's familiar with Plikas. Uh, again, I can answer some questions, um, but it's basically, uh, you've got QR codes um, with four different orientations that students can use and they don't, students don't need their own devices, which is quite nice, um, but you can still collate all the information. So to start with, uh, this particular teacher used it as a kind of assessment at the end of the lesson to see where the students are at. Um, and it used quite, uh, proved quite useful. The feedback from the students was really, really positive. They quite liked it. And it was really nice to also uh, identify anybody that maybe not naturally would kind of join in the class discussions or contributions in class actually showed quite a lot of aptitude and possibly could sit the higher uh, tier paper. Um, and also, uh, part of the thinking for this particular teacher is that um, it would allow to collect quite a lot of data should there be another um, center assessed grades process at the end of the year, because they couldn't run as many in-class assessments as they wanted to due to absences, um, COVID mainly. Um, so, once we had all finished our individual bits and we fed back and we shared resources and we all kind of tried little bits um, and took it back to our own teams, 
we then sat down and decided that we, we, we needed to look at something for the second cycle that feeds off the initial cycle. Um, and we needed to agree on something. Now, the person that picked clickers was quite keen to to do some further work on that because he did say that, you know, potentially there's there's lots of stuff that we could utilize that at the moment I'm not. So um, we did decide to go with clickers for cycle two, um, which was a bit scary for myself because I'm a little bit of a technophobe, um, but I embraced it never, nevertheless. So Part of the reason for going with clickers was uh, we looked at what showed the most interest with students, what we could use um, to identify and address skills gaps further. Uh, all, all the interventions that we used in cycle one were, were had, had positive outcomes, um, more or less, um, and showed promises in terms of you could take that further in terms of research. Um, but the app was something that I think the majority leaned towards um, because it could potentially be used as a as an additional teaching tool, not to replace anything else, but make things a little bit more interesting. So we had a look at possible applications. Now, at this point, some of the four colleges are already starting to look at revision for the upcoming exams. So we decided that one of the things that students struggle a lot with um, are those big mark kind of multi-step questions. And we were wondering if we could utilize clickers um, for that. So we listened to our colleague that had used clickers before, mm -hmm. and he had said that it, it provided a lower barrier for participation for less confident students. It was a nice low tech alternative compared to Kahoot or Socrative. And it also allowed him very well to identify and measure progress. So the students also very much enjoyed it. So we decided to pick five big mark questions. But we then threw a little bit of a spanner in the works and decided for it to be a little bit more objective that we would also use five different methods of delivery. So the reason for that really was that if you if we just use clickers, we felt that you know we either get it we like it or we don't like it we've got nothing really to compare to unless we then have a control group as well and we didn't quite have enough students for that so basically what we did is we picked those five big mark questions and the five methods were the following so one was the traditional talk and chalk chalk and talk talk and chalk uh, sorry uh, the second one was plickers the third one was prepared videos. Scaffolding strips was number four and model answers was number five. So we basically got students to look at the five questions, one at a time, obviously, um, and they would try and answer those questions. And then when we go through them, we would use one of the five different methods. Now, College 1 and 2 did exactly the same. So each class had a different pairing of questions or methods. Um, and there was a reason for that. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Whereas College 3 and 4 gave exactly the same pairings of questions and methods. So, we then asked students afterwards to fill in a little form on their phones um, and just rate from most useful to least useful. Um, and again, I won't go into too much detail in terms of how we coded it all. Um, but again, I can answer those questions. And the results were interesting. So if I break it down a little bit, I'll give you these first. So college one on the left here. So average raw score 
show that uh, chalk and talk overall was their preferred method. Clickers was the second. Um, and then videos, model answer was last, and scaffolding strips were fourth. Um, and then we also were aware that we needed to look at the fact that perhaps one of the questions was preferred to another question. So we then had to recode um, and rearrange um, our data again. Uh, but it was really, really interesting in, in terms of outcome um, that most students across the board preferred chalk and talk to any of the other methods. Um, and we are still discussing that now whilst I'm writing a report because our conclusion is still, we're still arguing about why that could possibly be. Um, and we had looked, there's a little bit more data if you want to have a look at these whilst I'm talking. Um, we had looked at things like uh, COVID, being out of the classroom, needing that kind of nurturing, you know, needing a person rather than a computer screen or phone screen. Um, the feedback in terms of the videos was quite good as well, because a lot of them said, well, I can stop and start whenever I want to. So I quite like that. So if I don't get something, I can go back and rewatch it. Um, but we were surprised about the outcomes of clickers being not as high as we had hoped to be. So we we would like to investigate that a little bit further, perhaps next year. Um, a bit more data. So question by question. So to just finish off, really, so clickers, we all, all, all of us, including the students, um, agreed that it was a really nice method to use. They could stay anonymous. Um, they could hold it up. And because each card is different, no one can tell if you're holding up A, B, C or D. Um, the only issue was really, it was really time consuming initially, printing all the cards and um, assigning them and putting them on the back of folders, uh, as well as the free versus the licensed version. So two of us worked with a fully licensed version and two of us worked with a free version. Um, so one of the things that we pulled out of it was that it is really nice to have new and creative resources, but the so-called old-fashioned method of chalk and talk still has its place. Um, and some colleges, once we sat down and had a chat, um, are really driving forward, being all wonderful and, and having loads of new creative things, but actually student feedback was from this very, very short um, time frame that actually they quite like. Uh, being talked through. Um, involving the learners into the uh, planning process, I think, has shown, you know, if you want to get them motivated and engaged, one way of doing so is get them in, involved and get ask them, you know, what do you like? Which of these bits do you prefer? Um, and I'll just leave that with a little quote at the end. And I am aware I've talked very, very fast, but we did so many things. Um, <laughs> I had to get it all in. Um, but the PowerPoint will be available. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions.